What is going on, y'all? It is the Caveman back at it again with another video. And after an absolutely wild week 18, Black Monday just made things even crazier. I was fully prepared to talk about the Bills today, talk about how the games went in week 18. But here I am talking about Black Monday because shit just hit the fan. I have a lot of things I want to say, and I'm going to get to it in just one second. But before I do that, you guys know the drill around here. Mott's applesauce, if you're ever hungry, thirsty, whatever it might be. Mott's applesauce will satisfy whatever satisfying you need to satisfy with the caveman guarantee. I promise it will never fail you. Black Monday is in full effect, folks. We all knew that some organizations had some humongous decisions to make. I just don't know if us as the public saw them all coming. And who's to say that Black Monday is over yet, folks? Somebody can get fired later on today still while I'm editing the video, or somebody else can get fired later on in the week. Who knows? Start with the first firing, right? This one didn't happen on Black Monday. This one happened yesterday morning, on Sunday morning, before all of the Week 18 games. The Broncos went ahead and fired head coach Vic Fangio after their Week 18 loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. I wonder if that game would have went differently and the Broncos did upset the Chiefs if Fangio would still be the coach. Nevertheless, he's out the door. I had a feeling that this guy kind of knew he was canned after I saw his post-game interview after their loss to the Chiefs. Just listen to this. Of years, only two division wins in that span. What do you think is separating this team from the rest of the AFC West? Well, I mean, those other three teams have top shelf quarterbacks, okay, which is obvious to everybody. Um, we just need to get a little bit better. A lot of the games, you know, we had a good game against the Chargers here in the first time. Last week was the COVID game. Uh, we had a tough day, close game with the Raiders the second time. Obviously, both games with the Chiefs, I think, were tight. You know, we're not quite there yet, but we're close. And I think the foundation is there for this franchise to close the gap and become more of a factor in this division. And even if that shit is true, which it kind of is, you don't say it, all right? If you're a guy that's sticking around looking forward to next year, you're not throwing your quarterbacks under the bus like Vic Fangio did in that post-game interview. He pretty much said, our quarterbacks suck in comparison to everybody else. They're not as good as the rest of the NFL. Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke are not top-shelf quarterbacks. They're not good. And I mean, you don't say something like that if you know you're sticking around into next season. So I had a feeling that he was definitely going to be out the door or else an asshole like that wouldn't say something like that. Broncos had a lot of hype heading into the season with the talent they had on the roster people were expecting them to be maybe a 9 to 11 or 12 win team and then they go out there and finish a nice 7 and 10 the absolute epitome of mediocrity my personal opinion i saw this coming the second they decided to name teddy bridgewater their starting quarterback over drew lock i remember that was just a complete shock to everybody including myself um that was when i knew they were not going to be a 9 10 or 11 win team right teddy bridgewater is going to get you to mediocrity and no further. Teddy Bridgewater makes sure that you're not going to be a bottom five team, but you're sure as hell aren't going to be a top 10 or top five team either, right? He'll keep you right in the middle, right at decent, right? And who who's shooting for decent anymore? You're shooting for the best of the best you can be, and going with Teddy Bridgewater was not accomplishing that. Hence their 7-10 record. I am in no way surprised by the finish that the Denver Broncos had. They 100% should have went with Drew Locke. Drew Locke's floor might be tremendously low than Teddy Bridgewater. We're talking like basement level low, but at least his ceiling is limitless. You don't know if you're going to get that basement level low with Drew Locke or if you're going to get some sky high ceiling with Drew Locke, but at least you have an opportunity to be great with Drew Locke because he's a young quarterback with all the tools and the athleticism to be one of the best in the NFL or be a top quarterback. I mean, he fits that archetype. And since this was going to be his third season in the NFL, this would have been the year that they could find out if Drew Locke actually could be that franchise quarterback for them. But now, instead, they went with Teddy Bridgewater and they're stuck with Drew Locke and they don't know what the hell to do with him because he just played his heart out in the last two games and nearly beat the Kansas City Chiefs in Week 18. So now the Denver Broncos are left with a lot more questions at the end of the season than answers, which is certainly not the way you want to end a year that you had high expectations for. I completely agree with firing Vic Fangio. All right, so let's move on to the Black Monday firings. The first one we got word of was the Vikings firing head coach Mike Zimmer, as well as general manager Rick Spielman, who's been with them since 2006, but I assume they just wanted to clean house completely. Anyways, focusing on the coach that just got fired, Mike Zimmer is another clown that just could not lead a team to success. He was with the Vikings for eight seasons. He had a combined record of 
72, 56 and 1 with three total playoff appearances. To be honest with you, that doesn't sound all that bad. If you read that number without context, you'd be thinking, okay, you know what? He wasn't all that horrible. But when you look at the bigger picture, when you actually give the situation some context, you would understand that Mike Zimmer just could not get the job done. The Vikings have some of the best talent on their roster that you can find across the NFL, yet this team could not even find the playoffs this season. This roster is literally any head coach's dream, and for some reason, Mike Zimmer just fumbled the bag year after year after year after year. And this season, I mean, it was one of the best rosters they've had in a while. And like I said, they couldn't even make the playoffs or have a winning record at that. Just don't know how many years you wait for this guy to turn things around. So I 100% agree with this firing. Mike Zimmer, the clown, is out of town. The next firing that happened shortly after Mike Zimmer found his way out of the Vikings organization was one that everybody was waiting to happen. I mean, it was bound to happen. The Chicago Bears fired not only general manager Ryan Pace, but as well as head coach Matt Nagy. This duo was bound to get kicked to the curb sooner than later. Everyone saw this one coming. Matt Nagy started off his short tenure with the Bears pretty damn strong with a 12-4 and record, but that was pretty much the peak of his coaching career with the Chicago Bears. It was just downhill from 2018 ever since. Although I can't lie, I kind of felt bad for Matt Nagy at a couple points this season. The dude was under fire the entire year. Apparently, he went to his kid's sporting event at their school, and he was just trying to be a dad at that point but apparently people saw Matt Nagy there and they started chanting fire Nagy fire Nagy it's like come on the dude's just trying to be a dad here his kids out there trying to play the sport they're playing and you're embarrassing the family I mean that was that was bad nevertheless as the years progressed it sure became quickly apparent that Matt Nagy was the biggest problem with the Chicago Bears he finished his tenure with an overall record of 34 and 31 with two playoff appearances across four years which really doesn't sound that bad but once again if your peak is coming in the first season you're bound to get canned eventually. That poor Chicago Bears defense has been slowly diminishing over the last couple of years, and the talent that they've had has been wasted because that offense has just been strapped to a wall by Matt Nagy's incompetence. And I know Mitch Trubisky hasn't had a starting gig since the Chicago Bears, and it might be premature to say, but I think it might be safe to say that Matt Nagy certainly didn't help Mitch Trubisky's development. I mean, that kid showed a lot of promise, and he was just completely battered down, and he might have been completely ruined by Matt Nagy if he didn't come over to Buffalo. Um, not to mention, he made one of the best wide receivers in the NFL completely invisible in Allen Robinson. Bears go and draft Justin Fields. There's a big quarterback controversy about who to start. Andy Dalton Justin Fields are going back and forth. Andy Dalton starts, and then he ends up getting hurt. Justin Fields goes in, and his first ever start in the NFL, and plays against the Browns pass rush, and gets completely demolished because of an absolutely horrible game plan. Poor guy could not play call for a peewee football team. I mean, him and his offensive coordinator would switch off play calling duties, and it was apparent that his offensive coordinator was much better at the job than he was because the offensive performance would surely improve. I think it was certainly time that uh, Matt Nagy found his way out the door. I'm not sure if he'll be finding another opportunity anytime soon. And lastly, the final firing that we've gotten from Black Monday up to this point was the Miami Dolphins firing head coach Brian Flores. This one caught a lot of people off guard, including myself. Brian Flores finished his three-year tenure with the Miami Dolphins with a record of 24 and 25, but after the way they finished the 2021 season here on that massive win streak after they started one and seven, I really didn't think this would be a possibility, but here we are. And Brian Flores 100% gets shot up to the top head coaching candidates list. He is absolutely going to be a hot commodity. He will not be unemployed for very long. A bunch of reports came out and said the reasoning that Brian Flores was actually relieved of his duties was was because of the poor relationships that he had with a couple of important people within the franchise, specifically being general manager Chris Greer, as well as franchise franchise quarterback to a tag of Iloa. The relationships were diminishing and it just wasn't a healthy spot. I know a lot of people are freaking out about this move and a lot of people think it was stupid and dumb by Miami to move on from such a great and prestigious head coach like Brian Flores, but I gotta be honest, I think I'm a part of the minority and I think it was the right move. Once again, I've agreed with every firing that has happened so far and I agree with this one. I still to this day believe that Brian Flores did not catch nearly enough flack for the way he handled the Ryan Fitzpatrick to attack of Iloa starting quarterback situation. It was so bad, so irresponsible. Ryan Fitzpatrick had the team playing pretty damn well to start last year. They were 3-3 three three going through the week 7 bye week. Ryan Fitzpatrick and that team were going into that bye week on a two-game winning streak. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, Brian Flores decides that Tua attack of Iloa is going to be their starting quarterback going forward. Yeah, what a great idea, Brian. We saw how that decision panned out for the Miami Dolphins week after week. Tua Tagovailoa was the starter. Week in and week out. 
and then for the first three quarters, he would suck. And Ryan Fitzpatrick would have to go in near the end of the third quarter or to start the fourth quarter to try and clean up Tua's mess. By year's end, they were fighting for a playoff spot when they should have had a playoff spot secured by then. And they had a game against the Buffalo Bills to make the playoffs. And Brian Flores' Miami Dolphins roster rolls out there and gets decimated. And I mean decimated by the Buffalo Bills second and third stringers in a must-win game to make the playoffs. That is how you have your team entering a must-win game. Brian Flores said it's inexcusable. This year was an embarrassment for Brian Flores, and for some reason, nobody thought twice about it. Nobody looked into it. Everybody thought it was fine, and he still was one of the best coaches in the NFL. That was bullshit. To be honest with you, I think we saw the lasting effects of his decision-making from last year play into this year, especially with his relationship with his franchise, once again, franchise, quarterback into a tag of LO because this year they didn't have the relief pitcher Jacoby Brissett could not be that relief pitcher that Ryan Fitzpatrick was and now Tua was 100% the starter and meanwhile the team starts the 2021 season one and seven franchise quarterback Tua a is struggling to get anything going and Brian Flores is up at the podium addressing Deshaun Watson trade rumors yeah, that sure is going to be a great way to instill some confidence in the kids you currently have on your roster, Brian. What a great job. And sure, yeah, sure, Brian Flores did deflect and kind of defend Tua publicly whenever he had the opportunity when he was addressing the Deshaun Watson situation. But that doesn't mean that Tua couldn't read the writing on the wall. Brian Flores was completely ready to ditch Tua if they were able to get their hands on Deshaun Watson. And Tua knew that. Tua 100% knew that no matter what Brian said to the public. As we learned, the one and only reason why the Miami Dolphins didn't pull the trigger for Deshaun Watson was because of the looming criminal investigations. And they didn't feel like giving up that much for a guy that was being investigated by the FBI was the best idea. But otherwise, otherwise they were completely ready to pull the trigger and move on. Now, today we learned that Brian Forrest was 100% the sole reason why Deshaun Watson was so interested in going to the Miami Dolphins because of the relationship he had with Brian Forrest and because Brian Forrest wanted him to come there. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that Tua Tagovailoa and Brian Flores probably didn't have the best of relationships here. Do you recall when Brian Flores almost drove Xavier Howard out the door, their all-pro cornerback, because they refused to agree on a contract? I mean, can you imagine if Brian Flores lost Xavier Howard because of the relationship he ruined between the two? I mean, what are you doing, Brian? Well, the Miami Dolphins rallied to try and make the playoffs on a seven-game win streak. They have a must-win game. Just like last year against the Buffalo Bills, they find themselves in another must-win game against the Tennessee Titans in Week 17. And what do the Miami Dolphins do once again? Just like they did last year. Laid a complete egg and lost 34-3 in a must-win game. Brian Forrest in must-win games. I guess he just can't prepare his team. I mean, that is, once again, inexcusable. For a team that was on a seven-game win streak, that is how you prepare your team the following week in the most important game of the year. Once again, inexcusable. Oh, and wait, there's one more thing. Brian Flores was with the Miami Dolphins for three seasons. They had two different defensive coordinators and four, four different offensive coordinators. He had six different coaches under him in his three years there. I think the Miami Dolphins finally realized that they were firing the wrong freaking person. But like I said earlier, Brian Flores will not be unemployed for very long. He will certainly find a job somewhere else. I don't think he's a like an awful, horrendous coach by any means, but I just think he's severely overrated. Yeah, those are my thoughts regarding the firings that have happened on Black Monday. I'm going to talk about all the other recent activity that has happened with the Bills and all the other teams in the NFL as of week 18 later on in the week. But I wanted to talk about the coaching firings for Black Monday today. It was just way too crazy not to mention like i explained i agreed with every single firing i did even if i'm in the minority for the brian forrest one but yeah let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below if you enjoyed the video as always please like subscribe do all the fun stuff if you want to hit the bell to be notified when i upload i'd appreciate that you want to go over to twitter follow me over there i'd appreciate that as well i have a tiktok that i think you should check out down in the description below and i hope to see you in the next one peace